Hi everyone, my name is Yan Jun Chen. I'm a sophomore at University of Delaware. My major is psychology. I choose Frederick Douglass as the hero of my story. Please take a seat on my train, and let me take you into the life of Frederick Douglass. You will see a clear timeline on the video. Enjoy it. Frederick Douglass was born in February at Home Hill Farm in Topic County, on the eastern shore of Maryland. His mother was an enslaved woman. His father was a white man and rumored to have been Douglass' master, Aaron Anthony. Douglass separated from his mother before he knew who she was. He never saw his mother more than four or five times in his life. He was sent to St. Michael's, Maryland. To work on the Lloyd Plantation, managed by Aaron Anthony. Anthony was a cruel man who takes pleasure in whipping his slaves. Douglas did not do much work on plantation because he wasn't old enough to work in the fields. In eighteen twenty six, Douglas left Lloyd's plantation. He was sent to Baltimore. Mister and Missus Out were both at home, and met Douglas at the door. He also met Hugh's wife. Sophia out. Very soon after, Douglas went to live with Mister and Missus out. Sophia out very kindly commenced to teach Douglas the alphabet, and assisted him in learning to spell words of three or four letters. Just at this point of his progress, Mister out at once forbid Missus out to instruct Douglas further, telling her that it was unlawful, as well as unsafe, to teach a slave to read. He said, "A nigger should know nothing, but to obey his master, to do as he is told to do." He also said, "If you teach him how to read, there will be no keeping him." These words sank deep into Douglas' heart, stirred up an entirely new train of thought. From that moment, he understood the pathway from slavery to freedom. It was just what he wanted. After that, Douglas continued to learn on his own. He lived in Hugh's house for about seven years. During this time, he making friends of all the little white boy, whom he met in the street, and succeeded in learning to read. Douglas has a religious awakening. The thought of being a slave for life began to bear heavily upon his heart. Every once in a while. He heard something about abolitionism. He said about learning what it meant. The dictionary defended him little or no help. He then accidentally got one of their city papers, containing an account of the number of petitions from the North, praying for the abolition of slavery in District of Columbia, and of the slave trade between the states. From this time, he understood the words abolition and abolitionist. Meanwhile, he learned how to write for a boy he knew who could write. Douglas' old master Anthony was dead after Douglas went to live at Baltimore. Douglas was immediately sent for to be valued with the other property. On the return trip, Douglas had the idea of running away. In eighteen thirty-four, Douglas intentionally let his owner's horse run away to Al's father. Because his father always gave his slaves enough to eat, Thomas Out was very angry, and gave him a number of severe whippings. He held out Douglas as a few hand to a poor farmer, Edward Covey, who has the reputation of being a brutal Negro breaker. Covey repeatedly tormented him and beat him severely until blood was dripping from his head, causing him to suffer both physically and mentally. And lose the desire to read. After months of ill treatment, it recalled the departed self-confident, and inspired him again with a determination to be free. Douglas sincerely to resist. When Covey next attempted to beat Douglas, he fought back so fiercely that Covey never touched him again, making Covey's Negro breaker reputation in jeopardy. So, to save his reputation. He suffered him to go unpunished. Douglas began to want to live upon free land, 
and indoctrinate others live with the idea of freedom. He met and fell in love with Anna Murray, a free black woman who works as a housekeeper in Baltimore. On September third, he escaped from slavery by borrowing a free black sailor's protection papers, and impersonated him. He arrived in New York City on September fourth, and changed his name to Frederick Johnson to avoid capture. He married with Anna and moved to New Bedford, Massachusetts, where Douglas worked as an unskilled laborer. They began to feel a degree of safety, and to prepare themselves for the duties and the responsibilities of a life of freedom. Three days after arriving in New Bedford, Douglas found a work, installing a sloop with a load of oil. He was now his own master. Douglas did a lot of works in New Bedford, until he became known to the anti-slavery world. Douglas spoke at an anti-slavery meeting in New Bedford. His speech was followed by an impassioned and encouraging response from William Lloyd Garrison. The society had Douglas as a speaker. He became closely allied with Garrison. Douglas would go on to work on Garrison's abolitionist publication, The Liberator. It was during this time and the liberator that Douglas would write his first and most well-known book, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglas, an American Slave. Douglas eventually left the liberator and spent two years in Europe. He returned to the U.S. in 1847, and partnered with physician, abolitionist, and black nationalist Martin Delaney to form a liberationist newspaper, called. The North Star, a true reflection of Douglas' activism in advocating for the rights of Black people as well as the rights of women. During the Civil War, Douglas actively pushed President Abraham Lincoln to prioritize Black freedom in his effort to preserve the Union. Douglas believed that allowing Black men to fight in the war would show to the country how committed Black people were to the United States. In eighteen sixty-three. Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January first, and Douglas became the recruiter for the Fifty Fourth Massachusetts Infantry, the first regiment of black soldiers. Lincoln was assassinated on April fourteen. On December fifth, Congress ratified the Thirteenth Amendment, outlawing slavery in the United States. In eighteen sixty six, Douglas attacked President Johnson's reconstruction policies. Leaded a delegation of black leaders to visit President Johnson to push for black suffrage, and he was featured speaker at celebration of the ratification of the Fifteenth Amendment, which gave blacks the right to vote. Frederick Douglass served in multiple political appointments in the post-war years, including president of the Freedman Saving Bank, United States Marshal for the District of Columbia, and a minister resident and consul general to the Republic of Haiti. And finally, in eighteen ninety five, Douglas died because of a heart attack in Washington D.C. On the way, he was returning home after speaking at a woman rights meeting. This is the last stop for the story of Frederick Douglass. His life was brutal and splendid. Hope you are enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching.